Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now I'm, I need to run some cables under the floorboards um, so I'm going to take this opportunity to show you how I lift up floorboards. I'll show you a couple of easy methods. Okay so I want to take up this floorboard so I want to cut it on a joist so when I put it back down it's supported by the joist so if you see them holes there that's a line of nails so it indicates that there's a joist running there so then 16 inches or 400 there should be another one which is there you can just about make out them nails they have got putty over the head so they're a bit harder to see so there's the nail heads so that indicates that the two inch joist will be about there so I want to cut fairly close to the nail heads about there so there's a few methods I could use now if you've got one of them a multi-tool the brilliant bit of kit so I could use that to cut along that line but there's no depth stop on it so if there was a pipe or something running along there then chances are that would nick the pipe and maybe cause a leak or if there's a wire catch the wire so I try to avoid them if I can but they are brilliant for other things another method to use is a 3 milli bit and what I could do is chain drill a load of holes there and then get a panel saw and just cut through them holes so I'll show you that one in a minute my preferred method is to use a mini circular saw now they're a brilliant bit of kit and the best thing about them is a small blade and you can set the depth on it so I know these floorboards are about 22mm thick which most old floorboards were so I don't know whether you can see the scale on that but it's fairly accurate so I can set that to just, just under 22mm so it'll cut through the floorboard without cutting anything that's underneath pipes or wires or anything Okay, so there's 20 mil so I'll set it to about there you see that little arrow and just lock it in place right there's no riding knife on it and you are going to do a plunge why well, I'm going to do a plunge cut so there is a slight chance of kickback so you need to be careful and you want to avoid hitting the nail heads so I'm going to cut slightly into this one and then go through slightly into that one. Okay, so that's cut across it now and it should be sitting on the joist. So I've cut that one, now I'll cut the other ends but I'll use a slightly different method. Right, so that's where the nails are. So I want to take this piece out, so I'm going to come this side of the nails. Somewhere about there. So. I'm going to be using this saw for the first time which was supplied by Ox Tools I've heard great things by them but I've never actually used them and they sent me a few of the tools to try out um, so I'll give this a go so anyway if, if I tried to cut through that with a, a panel saw it'd be quite difficult to get a start so if you haven't got power saws or whatever um, and you've got a drill I've got a 3mm drill bit in there so I'm going to chain drill a series of holes 
which will allow me to get the saw in and then cut it along the joist. Okay, so like before, I don't know if there's a, a pipe running under here or anything like that, and I haven't got a pipe detector or a wire detector, so I only want to go through the thickness of the floorboard. Um, I don't want to plunge all the way through with the drill because I don't really want to go through a pipe and then have a flood. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a depth stop on it. So a little bit of masking tape. And a 22mm. The masking tape on. Just so I know not to drill past that point to minimise the chances of going through anything that's underneath the floorboards. help if we use the straight edge as well to keep them all fairly in line. Alright, let's try out this new OXO. that's down to the joist now. I've got to say these ox saws aren't bad. I'll definitely use it again. If you were going to use a multi-tool with a saw blade in it, then to stop yourself going too far uh, and going through a pipe or a wire, then you could do the same again. Put a bit of masking tape on it as a depth stop. So they're the three easiest methods I've found. Okay, so these are tongue and groove floorboards. So one's got a tongue and one's got a groove. So inside there you've got a piece of wood which you've still got to remove. Now again you could use the multi-tool or you could use the mini circular saw which is my pre preferred method. So I'll show you that one now. Okay so just Plunge in just before your line, or your saw cut. Okay, so that's cut away the tongue nicely there. But if you haven't got one of them, then you can use a floorboard chisel and a hammer. So basically with this, all you're doing, you're putting it into the groove and then you're going to break away the tongue. Um, so it's going to splinter away inside. Okay, and then with that chisel, just put it in the groove and you can pop the floorboards up. Okay, so using that method, you do break away a bit of the floorboard. So I've cut them, they cut fairly cleanly. Um, I'm well on half of the joist, so when that goes back down, it's easily going to be supported by the joist each end. So when I put floorboards back down, I 
don't like to nail them in case they've got to come back up again. It's much easier to take them up when they've got screws. So I just use some 45 mil screws or two inch screws. But because I'll be screwing them close to the end of the board, I always pre-drill them first with a pilot bit. So I'll just take the tape off. Right, so I'll come in a bit from the edge and the joist goes to about there. So I'll come back here and just drill on a slight angle. And you always put your fixings to the edge of the boards because sometimes services run through the middle of them. Okay, so that's how I remove and replace floorboards for running services under the floors. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.